Hello, I'm Kirk Weiler, and this is Common Core Algebra 2 by eMath Instruction. Today, we're going to be doing unit number 11, lesson number 4, on the definition of sine and cosine. So, you saw the sine and the cosine and the tangent trig ratios back in Common Core Geometry, and you did a lot of work with them. But back in Common Core Geometry, the sine, the cosine, and the tangent ratios were all defined in terms of the acute angles of a right triangle. Now, we want to use those definitions. We certainly don't want to come along and call sine and cosine something that will be totally, totally different than what we had before. But in this lesson, we'd like to extend it so that we can look at the sine and the cosine of just about any angle. You know, whether it's acute, obtuse, negative, positive, doesn't matter. So let's first review, though, what you saw in Common Core Geometry. So right triangle trig refresher. If I've got a right triangle, and I've got one of the acute angles, let's call it A, right here, then the sine of angle A is simply the division between the side length opposite of A, let's say that this was 3, and the hypotenuse, let's call that 5. So we would say that the sine of A is the ratio 3 fifths, or 0 0.6. The cosine of angle A is the side length adjacent to A, let's call that 4, divided by the hypotenuse. So in this case, that would be 4 fifths, or 0 0.8. Now I just made these numbers up, although a 3, 4, 5 is a right triangle. I just wanted to review for you that, that idea that the sine was the opposite over the hypotenuse and the cosine was the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Now we don't want that to change. As we define sine and cosine today, we don't want those two things to be any different. All right, Otherwise we'd have to go back to last year and it'd be all sorts of crazy. So anyway, I'm going to clear this out. And now let's use the unit circle to define sine and cosine. So let's say that we've got the unit circle, again centered at the origin with a radius of 1, with an angle drawn in standard position, very important, initial ray lying along the x-axis, terminal ray somewhere else. And let's say that it intersects the circle at some generic coordinate point x, y. Letter A says, given the right triangle shown, find an expression for sine of theta. Well, the plain fact is what we've got here is we've got a right triangle, right? We've got this right triangle. And it's a right triangle with three side lengths, x, y, and the number 1. So the sine of theta will be the side opposite of theta divided by the hypotenuse. But the side opposite of theta is simply the y-coordinate and the hypotenuse is simply 1. So the sine of theta is simply the y-coordinate on the unit circle. Now what's wonderful about that is that it means that the y-coordinate of any pair on the unit circle will give us the sine of the angle. And now we don't have to worry about whether the angle is acute, obtuse, 90, 180, negative 270. It doesn't matter. Now why don't you do the same thing for letter B? All right, well in letter B, we want an expression for cosine theta. Same idea. Cosine theta will be the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, but the adjacent side is the x-coordinate divided by the hypotenuse, which is 1, and that just gives us the x-coordinate. I cannot possibly, possibly emphasize enough how amazingly important these two facts are. They define the sine and cosine ratios, and they are the two most useful things in all of trigonometry. And they're weird, because all of a sudden we're going to define a function where the input is an angle, and the output is one of the two pieces of a coordinate point on a circle with a radius of 1. Oh, right? But that's what we have. And it's really great. So pause the video now. Think about this a bit, and then we'll move on and we'll start to use it some. Okay, I'm going to clear out the text. Here it is. 
Defining the sine and cosine functions. For an angle in standard position, whose terminal ray passes through the point x, y on the unit circle, the sine of that angle is the y-coordinate, and the cosine of that angle is the x-coordinate. And that's all there is to it. All right? Really kind of cool. Now, here's our diagram of the unit circle. Now, exercise two is probably going to be one of the fastest things ever because it just says using the unit circle diagram determine each of the following values. And it asks us for the sine of 30 degrees. Well, the sine is the y coordinate. So if we go to an angle of 30 degrees on our unit circle and we pull off the y coordinate, it's one half. That's it. That's the whole deal, right? Sine of 240. Well, I go to 240 on the unit circle. The sine is the y coordinate. So it's got to be negative root 3 divided by 2. Let's do one with cosine. Cosine of 90 degrees, well, the cosine is the x-coordinate. So if I go to 90 on my unit circle and I look at the x-coordinate, that's equal to 0. The cosine of 90 is 0. One more, and then we'll have you do the next four on your own. The cosine of 180, well, there's 180 on my unit circle. The cosine, again, is the x-coordinate and that's equal to negative 1. So simple. So very, very, very easy. In fact, let's do something really quick before we have you do the last line. Let's verify this on the, on the graphing calculator. Let's bring out the TI-84+. plus. Okay, there it is. So what I want to do real quickly is I want to just, you know, like check out a few of these things, maybe like A, C, and D. We'll, we'll skip letter B that, where it got kind of messy. Um, but the first thing I have to do is make sure my calculator is in what's called degree mode because it's naturally in radian mode of all things. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to hit the mode button and I'm going to go down to this line that says radians degrees and I'm going to move it over to degrees and hit enter on that. Okay, make sure it's all highlighted. Okay, so that sort of like the, the part that says degrees is highlighted. Then I'm going to get out of there. I'm going to hit quit, which is second mode. And back to the main screen and watch this. Let me type in sine 30, enter. And the calculator tells me 0 0.5, which is 1 half. Watch this. Let's do cosine of 90. Let's do cosine 90, enter. And it gives me 0. And let's do the cosine of 180 since we have the calculator out. So let's type in cosine. 180, parentheses, hit enter, and there it is, negative 1. All right, I just wanted to use the calculator to verify a little bit of what we've been seeing. Let's put it away now. That's probably like the briefest visit for our TI-84 Plus ever. But I wanted to give you some confidence that, yeah, the unit circle is doing what it's supposed to do to give us these values. Why don't you fill in the last four? Take a minute. All right, pretty easy, you know. Sine of 90 degrees, well, the sine is the y-coordinate. If we go up to 90 degrees, the y-coordinate is equal to 1. The sine of 90 is 1. The sine of 135, again, that's a y-coordinate. So I go to 135, the sine, the y-coordinate is root 2 divided by 2. Cosine of 150, that's the x-coordinate. I go to 150, I look at it, it's x-coordinate. That's negative root 3 divided by 2. Cosine of 0. Wow, okay, 0 is right here. The cosine is the x-coordinate. And cosine of 0 is 1. Very important one. All right, that's it. The rest of the lesson is going to be equally as easy as long as you remember two things. On the unit circle, on the unit circle, the sine is the y-coordinate and the cosine is the x-coordinate. And that's it. So pause the video now and write down anything you need to. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the text. All right. Read through num number three. I don't even want to read it to you. Read through it and see if you can get the right answer.
All right. Well, you know, there's a lot of stuff written here, but at the end of the day, it's a really easy problem. The terminal ray of an angle alpha is drawn in standard position and passes through the point negative 0 0.6, 0 0.8, which lies on the unit circle. Which of the following gives the value of sine alpha? Well, the sine is always the y coordinate. So the correct answer is choice two, 0 0.8. All right. I don't know what the angle is, but what I do know is that the sine of the angle is 0 0.8. It's a little weird, admittedly, but that's the way it is. All right. Pause the video now. Write down anything you need to. All right. I'm getting rid of it. Boom. And gone. Let's take a look at exercise four. One important thing is going to be to know whether the outputs of sine and cosine, whether the outputs of sine and cosine are positive or negative in the various quadrants we're in. So real quick, let's, let's draw a little picture of our quadrants. So okay, little axes here, little axes here. Remember this is quadrant one, this is quadrant two, this is quadrant three, and this is quadrant four. Right, And all I'm talking about is if we have a terminal ray that falls in the first quadrant, is sine, cosine, negative, or positive? Second quadrant, negative or positive? Third quadrant, negative or positive? Fourth quadrant, negative or positive? Okay, Not the angle. The angle, whether that's negative or positive, all depends on whether we're rotating clockwise or counterclockwise. Here, I want to know if the outputs of the sine and the cosine are positive or negative. Now this is pretty easy, so I'd like you to take a minute and think about it, and then we'll work through them all. Okay, let's do it. So, if we had the unit circle, oof, and we had an angle that terminated in the first quadrant, right, then the x-coordinate would certainly be positive, and so would the y-coordinate. So in quadrant one, sine would be positive because it's the y-coordinate, and cosine would be positive because it's the y-coordinate. On the other hand, if we had an angle whose terminal ray ended in the second quadrant, the x-coordinate would be negative, and the y-coordinate would be positive. Now remember, sine is the y-coordinate, so that would be positive. Cosine is the x-coordinate, that would be negative. If we had an angle that terminated in the third quadrant, well, both the x and the y coordinates would be negative, so both the sine and the cosine would be negative. And finally, if we had an angle terminating in the fourth quadrant, the x coordinate would certainly be positive, the y coordinate would be negative, so sine would be positive. So, I just made a mistake. So sine would be negative and cosine would be positive. Some people inv um, sort of invent mnemonics, memory devices, to remember this because it's pretty important. Um, to me, you don't need a memory device to remember this. You only need two things. Sine is the y-coordinate, and cosine is the x-coordinate. Now, you might have to memorize those, but then everything else should be pretty obvious. All right, pause the video now and write down anything you need to. Let's clear it out. All right, the last thing that we're going to look at is an identity. You remember what an identity is? It's an equation that is true for any input whatsoever, any input whatsoever. And the Pythagorean identity is really kind of cool. Here it is. Now let's make sure you understand that. It says, look, I don't care what angle you have, any angle at all. If you find its cosine and you square it, and you find its sine, and you square it, and you add them together, they will always give you the number one. Please notice, I'm not adding cosine to sine and squaring. I'm taking cosine and squaring it. I'm taking sine and squaring it. I'm adding them together and getting one. Now, before we kind of use this, let's make sure that you understand it. This is the equation of the unit circle, right? We saw that in the last lesson. But x just is the cosine of the angle. And y is just the sine of the angle. So 
this and this are the same thing. The Pythagorean identity is really just the Pythagorean theorem applied to the unit circle and to the definition of sine and cosine. Now what's cool about that is it means that if we know either sine or cosine, we can figure out the other one as long as we know what quadrant the angle is in. All right, let's see how that's done. In exercise five, it says an angle alpha has a terminal ray that falls in the second quadrant. Very important. It's known that sine of alpha is three-fifths. We want to find out cosine of alpha. All right, so watch. I know that the cosine of alpha squared plus the sine of alpha squared is equal to one. Now, I don't know what the cosine of alpha is, so I'm just going to leave that as cosine alpha squared. But I know sine of alpha is three-fifths, not alpha, but actually sine of alpha. There it is. So I'm, gonna, I'm just putting three-fifths in for this entire thing. Well, let's solve this. I'm going to keep writing down cosine alpha squared. Of course, three-fifths squared is nine-twenty-fifths. Then we can subtract a nine-twenty-fifths from both sides. And I find that the cosine of alpha squared is equal to 16 25ths. Think about that for a little bit. 25 25ths minus 9 25ths, 16 25ths. But now we can take the square root of both sides. Now you've got to be careful because this is going to introduce a plus minus. And this time we have to have a plus minus. Now lucky for us, 16 and 25 are both beautiful perfect squares. Square root of 16 is 4, square root of 25 is 5. So what does this mean? It either means that cosine alpha is equal to a positive four-fifths or cosine of alpha is equal to negative four-fifths. And I gotta figure out which one. Well, I'm in the second quadrant. And in the second quadrant, the x-coordinate is negative, right? The x-coordinate is negative. And that means that cosine must be negative. So the cosine is negative four-fifths, right? And that's it. But that's why we need to know that it's in the second quadrant, because I don't know, you know, cosine could be positive four-fifths, it could be negative four-fifths. But because cosine is the x-coordinate, then what I know for certain is that if I'm in the second quadrant, the x-coordinate is negative, and therefore the cosine's negative. That's kind of cool. All right, let's pause there. Think about what we just did. All right, I'm going to get rid of it, and then we're going to do one, one more of those that's a little bit messier. All right, an angle theta has a terminal ray that falls in the first quadrant. All right, great. And cosine theta equals one-third. Determine the value of sine theta in simplest radical form. Yeah, I hate it when that happens. All right, let's write down that Pythagorean identity again. Cosine theta squared plus sine theta squared equals one. Well, I know cosine theta is one third, not theta, cosine theta. So I'm gonna put one third in for it. Now I have to solve for sine theta, not theta, right? So one third squared is one ninth, that's easy sine theta squared equals one. Subtract a one ninth from both sides. Almost looks like a divided by. And we'll have sine theta squared equals eight ninths. Let me pause there for a minute. Okay. All right, well, that means that sine theta must be plus or minus, don't forget that, the square root of eight ninths. Well, let's not worry yet about the plus minus. We'll figure that out in a little bit. So that's gonna be the square root of eight divided by the square root of nine. We can do a little bit with the square root of eight, not much, it's a little bit obnoxious. We can write it as root four root two, and the square root of nine is nice, that's just three. So sine theta is plus or minus two root two, all divided by three. But the question is, which one is it? Is it positive 2 root 2 divided by 3? Or is it negative root 2 divided 2 times 2 divided by 3? Well, we're in the first quadrant. And in the first quadrant, both x, 
right? We have a positive and a positive. I care about sine, which is the y coordinate. So in the first quadrant, the sine must be positive 2 root 2 divided by 3. And that's it, right? So it's kind of cool. It seems like sine and cosine should be totally independent of each other. And yet they're tied together by the geometry of the unit circle, allowing us to figure out the value of one if we know the value of the other and which quadrant we're lying in. Okay, pause the video now, write down anything you need to. Okay, I'm going to clear out the text and we'll finish up. So, last year in geometry, you saw how the right triangle trig ratios were defined for acute angles. Today, we were able to extend the definitions of sine and cosine to any angle, negative or positive, acute, obtuse, straight angles, right angles, all of that, none of which could you do last year. But this year we did it by using those ratio definitions along with the unit circle to define the cosine of any angle as the x-coordinate on the unit circle and the sine of the angle as the y-coordinate. Those are going to be amazingly important facts, so really drill them into your head tonight. All right, for now I want to thank you for joining me for another Common Core Algebra 2 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.